Hey everybody, Radaman here. This video briefly overviews the genetic mechanics introduced by RimWorld's Biotech DLC. I'll be only covering mechanics relevant to genetics, other topics will be covered in other videos. Please use YouTube chapters if you're looking for something specific. Some parts of the genetic mechanics may change while biotech gets updated and balanced. What are the two types of genes? There are two types of genes that humanoids now have in RimWorld, germline genes and xenogenes. Germline genes, sometimes called endogenes, are genes you inherit from your parents at birth or receive at scenario setup. Germline genes cannot be changed except with either development mode or mods. An example of a germline gene is a person's skin color. Xenogenes are genes that can be implanted into an individual. They can be removed, changed, or overwritten, and are not genetically passed down to children. You can think of xenogenes like genetic bionics. You can install a bionic leg into a colonist, but that doesn't mean the colonist child will be born with a bionic leg. Xenogenes will override germline genes, so if you inherited a germline gene you do not like, you can implant yourself with a xenogene to override it and nullify it. What new races are there? RimWorld Biotech introduces the concept of races, as well as genetically engineered xenohumans. The original humans, referred to as baseliners, only have genetic skin color and hair color. There are six new races with germline genes. Dirt moles, Neanderthals, pigskins, impids, wasters, and edikin. There are four new xenohumans with xenogenes, genies, hussars, hymates, and sanguophages. Here is a brief overview of the new races. Dirt moles are great miners who see in the dark and heal quickly, but hate direct sunlight, move slowly, and can't shoot accurately at long range. Neanderthals are tough with high pain tolerance and strong disease immunity, also tolerant of extreme temperatures and are good at melee, but are dumb, move slowly, and aren't great at shooting, social, or research. Pigskins have a strong immunity with high pain tolerance and can eat raw food efficiently without food poisoning risk, but aren't great cooks or long-range shooters and have lowered manipulation. Impids are fast and can spew fire in combat, are heat and fire resistant, but terrible at melee, heal and recover slowly from sickness and injuries and are unskilled at farming and ranching. They're also genetically pessimistic. Wasters have incredible immune systems and are entirely unaffected by toxins and pollution. In fact, they even benefit from being in polluted environments. They are terrible at ranching, cooking, and art, and they do have a dependency on psychite drugs. If they do not consume a psychite-based drug at least once per year, they die. Edikin can call wild animals to fight for them, are good in melee, very cold tolerant, tough, and make great ranchers. They're cyclically dull and move faster when naked, slower when clothed. They're awful at mining, need more sleep than normal, and heal slowly. Genies are mentalist xenohumans who specialize at crafting and intellectual tasks, have higher manipulation, and never get into social fights or try to escape from prisons. They're not great at farming, ranching, or socializing, and are terrible at combat due to being delicate and wimpy. Hussars are super soldier xenohumans who heal incredibly quickly, are psychically deaf, rendering them immune to psychic attacks, and are also unstoppable, meaning they aren't staggered when hit. They don't feel much pain, are fairly temperature tolerant, and are resistant to toxins. They do get into more social fights, and their mental breaks are always violent. They also depend on go juice. If they do not consume it at least once per year, they die. Primates are pacifistic socialite xenohumans who are beautiful, happy, kind, and great at social tasks. They can psychically bond with people, meaning they'll always succeed at romance. They can never fight, don't tolerate heat well, and aren't great at mining or farming. Sanguophages are xenohuman vampires. I am not going to cover all of their xenogenetic details, but to sum them up quickly, they're incredibly powerful, never age or get sick and are nearly immortal. They're very weak to fire and sunlight. 
They're a lot more complex than the other Xenohuman types, and I'll be covering the details of single phages in a separate tutorial. What is gene complexity and metabolic efficiency? Gene complexity is a number assigned to each gene that represents how difficult it is to incorporate into your genome. Generally speaking, the more potent the gene is, the more complex it is. Complex genes are more difficult to assemble and implant. The more complex the gene, the longer it takes to regrow. I'll have more about gene implantation later on. Metabolic efficiency, in simplest terms, is how hungry your colonist will be. Beneficial genes that make you stronger usually have a negative metabolic efficiency, meaning that if you have those genes, you will need to eat more. Likewise, detrimental genes that make you weaker have a positive metabolic efficiency and make you need to eat less. The range of metabolism caps out between negative 5, where you have to eat 225% more, and positive 5, where you have to eat 50% less. Not all genes will have metabolic efficiencies. Aesthetic features like hair, skin, voice, and other facial features do not carry efficiencies. How does germline gene inheritance work? Non-hybrid pregnancy is very straightforward. If both genetic parents are of the same species, the child will be the same species. For instance, if two dirt moles have a child, the child will be a dirt mole as well. You can design your own custom species with the Xenotype Editor. I'll get into that later in this video. What are hybrids and how do germline genes work for hybrids? Hybrid is a term for when two different species have a child. Hybrids are a lot more complicated to explain, but simply put, a hybrid will inherit a subset of genes from the parents. When an embryo is created, either through natural means or artificial insemination, it is assigned a random metabolic range of either 1, 2, or 3. 70% of embryos will generate a range of 1, 20% for a range of 2, and 10% for a range of 3. This random generated number is hidden to the player, but you can often analyze the embryo to figure out if you generated a 1, 2, or 3. After the metabolic range is determined, genes are then assigned to the embryo. Genes both parents have that do not have metabolic efficiencies are guaranteed to be passed down to the child, usually cosmetic traits like hair color, voice, skin color, and other features. So for instance, two parents with germline genes for green hair are guaranteed to have a green-haired child. Genes are added to the embryo by drawing from a randomized pool of genes from both parents. Genes both parents have are guaranteed to be included in the pool, but can still fail to be added if it exceeds the metabolic range. The genes that are picked to be added are then calculated if they fall within the metabolic range of the embryo. If the gene falls outside of the metabolic range, it is not inherited. I'll give you an example to make this more clear. Let's say you have a Neanderthal and a pigskin who have a baby with a metabolic range of 1 or in other words, minus one to plus one. The first gene selected to be added is strong immunity, and strong immunity has a metabolic efficiency of minus one. So that moves the metabolic range from zero to minus one. The second gene to be added is reduced pain. Reduced pain is also a minus one metabolic efficiency, which would push the metabolism to minus two. So reduced pain is not inherited because it would cause the embryo to go beyond the metabolic range. The third gene is nearsightedness, which has a metabolic efficiency of plus two. It is added because it would change the embryo from minus one to plus one. This process continues through all of the random genes to be inherited. Embryos that are able to accommodate a range of minus three to plus three usually inherit more genes, but those genes can either be negative or positive so it is also more of a gamble. It is also worth noting that if by chance two hybrids are identical genetically, their offspring still inherits genes using the hybrid inheritance method, meaning that you cannot create new species during regular gameplay. What are the three research projects for genetics? The first research is Xenogenetics, which unlocks the gene extractor, gene bank, and gene assembler allowing you to scan, bank, and assemble genes for implantation, which is called a xenogerm. Without further research, you'll be restricted to xenogerms no greater than a complexity of 6, which is the sum of the complexity of the genes contained within the xenogerm. 
I'll explain xenogerms in more detail later on in this tutorial. Gene processor research allows you to build gene processors that increase the gene complexity maximum by two for each that is constructed within 12 range of the gene assembler. Archogenetics research allows you to start assembling and implanting archite genes, which are a special and powerful type of gene. I'll go more into detail about archite genes later in this tutorial. How does gene scanning work? You can scan the genes of colonists, prisoners, and slaves of your colony with a gene extractor. You can either enter the gene extractor yourself or carry a person to the extractor. It takes 12 hours to extract genes from a person, and once the process is complete, the gene extractor will generate a random gene pack containing at least one gene from the patient. Sometimes you'll extract multiple genes that are bundled together. If they're bundled together, they cannot be separated. The patient doesn't lose the gene, the process creates a copy to store in a bank. Germline and xenogenes can be extracted, but archite genes cannot be extracted. The gene pack then can be banked in a gene bank for assembly or sold. Gene packs will decay outside of a gene bank, so if you intend to sell genes on the open market, it is wise to bank them while you wait for trade opportunities. The target of the scan will suffer gene loss shock for four days, lowering movement speed, consciousness, and blood filtration, as well as inflicting pain. They will also have a genes regrowing condition, which means if they repeat the process before the condition resolves, the scanning process will kill them. This is even true for the immortal sanguifages. How does gene assembly and xenogerm implantation work? Once you have at least one gene pack banked in a gene bank, you are then able to assemble genes in a gene assembler. Once assembled, they'll create an item called a xenogerm, which contains the assembled genes ready to be implanted in a person. The gene assembler allows you to assemble any combination of genes that you have banked, provided that the banks are within 12 tiles of the assembler. If a gene is bundled with other genes, you cannot separate specific genes out of the bundle, as I mentioned before. The assembler also has a maximum complexity. By default, you cannot assemble genes beyond six complexity. If you need more complexity, you can build gene processors within 12 tiles of your assembler. Each one adds an additional two complexity. Another limitation is that you cannot build a xenogerm beyond minus five metabolic efficiency, meaning that if you want to add a lot of positive genes, you have to balance them out somehow. The more complex the xenogerm, the longer the patient will recover from implantation. If a person already has genes implanted into them, you can still implant another xenogerm, but it will erase the original implanted xenogenes. This means that you cannot implant hymates, genies, hussars, or sanguophages without erasing their xenogenes. What are archite genes? Archite genes are powerful genes that cannot be scanned. Sanguophages have all seven archite genes. Archite genes can be purchased from traders and then banked for assembly or acquired from a vampire directly. What are archite capsules? Archite capsules are rare and exotic items allowing you to implant banked archite genes. Six of the seven archite genes require one capsule to be implanted, and archite metabolism requires two capsules, meaning that if you want to implant all seven archite genes, you would need eight capsules to perform the xenogerm implantation. What is a gene implanter? A gene implanter is a gene that grants a special organ which allows you to insert your xenogenes into a recipient. The process has a two-year cooldown and is the method that sanguophages use to spread vampirism. A gene implanter will copy archite genes into the recipient, skipping the need for archite capsules, archogenetics research, and the banking of archite genes. How do I become a sanguophage? You can become a sanguophage by knocking out a sanguophage to force them to make you a sanguophage, by recruiting one and have them implant their genes into you, or by accepting a sanguophage meeting request fulfilling it, and then picking a colonist to become one. Xenotype Editor and Creating Your Own Species During character creation, the Xenotype Editor button allows the player to customize germline and xenogenes of your initial characters. If you click the Genes Are Inherited checkbox, the genes you add will be considered germline, and if not, they'll be considered xenogenes. You're still limited to the minus five metabolism cap 
unless you click the Ignore Restrictions button as well. The Xenotype Editor allows you to design your own custom races in RimWorld, and members of your custom race can pass down their genes to offspring, guaranteeing the offspring will be of the same race. I'll have more guides coming soon, so if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so, so you won't miss out on future content. Thanks for watching. I hope this guide has been helpful.